Hi, my name's Neil Fallon. I sing for Clutch, and if you're not in the now, you're in the nothing. So the uh, big Clutch Hell Yeah tour is going on right now. How's, how's that been going for you guys? It's been fun. Just uh, just banging these shows out one after another. Mm -hmm. Probably about two thirds of the way done. Um, headed kind of back east at this point, and uh, it's been good. Kind of heading back home now. Yeah, more or less. We started out east, came all the farthest west we got was Boulder, mm -hmm. and then we're headed back east now. Nice. So what's what's next for for you guys after the Hell Yeah tour? Are you gonna have to take some time off? You gonna go back out on the road? Uh, we've got. Uh, one or two European festivals we're going to do in the summer. Uh, it's kind of real short tours, um, the one in July and the one in September. But for the most part, we're up until the end of August, we're busy writing our record. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll record in September. Nice. And uh, that'll probably put the record out at the beginning of 2013. Nice. And um, so we've been playing a lot, a, lot, a lot of new songs live while just kind of putting them through the trials stage. Seeing which ones have the potential of becoming part of your guys' clutch family. Yeah, I think that's the best way to find out. Sometimes you write a song in the studio and then you play it on stage and it doesn't really sound the same. It's kind of like night and day between the two. Yeah, yeah for sure. Now, talking about the new record, um, how would you describe the writing process for this one as opposed to like maybe the last one or two? Is it the songs different or are you staying the same style? Um, the songs that we've written thus far have been faster, um, not many more aggressive, just the tempo's faster, mm -hmm. um, and just kind of stripped down nuts and bolts rock and roll. I mean, not, maybe that's because, you know, touring with, you know, uh, Motorhead and Thin Lizzy kind of back to back, maybe that rubbed off on us a little bit, but that's a good problem to have. Oh yeah, wow. That's definitely a... Some good bands to be out on the road with. Yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Any any particular memories from that tour that kind of stand out in your mind? Anything special happen or? Um, I mean, it was. I mean, getting to talk to Lemmy or, or Scott Gorham uh, was, you know, just rad. You yeah. Know, it was just in a very casual way. Um, you know, there's not nearly as much excitement and drama as people might think on the off hours of not being on stage. We, we keep things very low key, mm -hmm. um, but you know, I can say I've between the two tours we've done with Motorhead, I've seen Motorhead probably 60 times, wow. and I've seen you know, Thin Lizzy now probably 20 times. You know, obviously, it's not the, the, the Thin Lizzy of, of Phil's day, mm -hmm. but um, I thought they shredded. You know, they were incredible. And I, I wish um, they would kind of get the acknowledgement um, here that they do back in the UK. Mm -hmm. Because those shows are fantastic. They're really, really good. Mm -hmm. Now, on the lines of you were talking about those bands, uh, influences for you personally, um, I assume those two were influences on you. Anybody else that was like a real heavy influence on you musically? Um, I think there's a couple different branches. Like when, when we were really young, uh, listened to both a lot of heavy metal like Black Sabbath, and listened to a lot of punk rock like The Bad Brains. Mm -hmm. And uh, in all the bands that were associated with those two kind of camps. You know, we listened to a lot of Fugazi, and I think they had a, a bigger influence than we realized, just, um, at the, that not band. at the time, but in hindsight, I think uh, they had a big influence. Um, not overtly, but I guess anything you listen to is an influence, mm -hmm. one way or another, even if it's just a couple notes in one song. Mm -hmm. uh, we listened to a lot of blues and jazz and country and hip hop and you know everything under the sun. It's important to kind of listen to music that doesn't sound like yours. Yeah. To put it things in perspective. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, we were outside waiting to come in, and there's a, a real young boy out there. This is like his first concert, mm -hmm. and he's holding clutch on vinyl. You don't see vinyl around very much anymore. What, what do you? What's your thoughts about vinyl and how it kind of disappeared? But then there's some spots where it's kind of coming back. Are you a vinyl fan? Yes, I am. Um, I think it's, well, there's a couple different things there. CDs have become, uh, are kind of going the way of the cassette in a lot of ways. I mean, people buy a CD, they burn it, and then it ends up on the floor of their car. Uh, a 
vinyl is much more of a fragile thing and it's much more of a tangible collector's thing and you, you look at it you, you feel it and when you play it you're dedicated to listening to it it's not like an iPod where you just take your eye from your, your earbuds in and out mm -hmm. um, it's more of like a dedicated listening experience when you sit down to listen to a record and I think maybe people are rediscovering that um, people's attention spans are so short these days I think it's a good thing mm -hmm. um and also, with MP3s, they're so intangible. You know, they're great because you can carry you know, thousands of songs with you at any time. But I think that, uh, it feels like when you have a record, it's almost like buying stock in a band. You know, you feel like you've interacted with them more than you would have than just by duplicating an MP3. Mm -hmm. And um, it sounds better. Mm -hmm. I guess that's probably the most important thing. Yeah. Now, do you have a, a favorite record that you own in your collection that is like the prized possession, like your number one? Like you can't go anywhere without having that one. Um, there's a lot of them. Uh, I think probably Side B of Pink Floyd's Metal is one of my my favorite things to listen to on a Sunday morning. Nice. Um, That's pretty badass. It's, uh, yeah, it's a. I, mean, I found it at a, at a store for like eight ninety nine, and wow. uh, I guess they printed up so many of them that they're pretty cheap. I mean, I'm not really into collecting rarities. Mm -hmm. I, I like. Um, you buy like stuff that you can play. Yeah, I want to listen to it. Yeah. I mean, I have some old hardcore seven inches that are worth hundreds of dollars, but I'll never listen to them because they're terrible. <laughs> but apparently, some people just want to dish out money because there was only, you know, five hundred or a thousand of these things made. Mm -hmm. um, and if, uh, if I ever need some extra change, I will, I will certainly be more willing to sell those than Pink Floyd's metal. Yeah. To be right. completely honest. No, I was talking about this young boy outside. Uh, this is going to be his first concert. Mm. Uh, what, do you, what do you think about the, the younger generation coming on, becoming Clutch fans? Does that surprise you that the younger guys, the younger generation is digging what you guys are doing? Well, it's gratifying. And um, it does, um, I don't know what the right word is. It, I guess it is gratifying uh, that young kids who you get bombarded by peer pressure to listen to very specific things uh, by their friends and nine times out of ten they're absolutely terrible mm -hmm. I was no different when I was that age yeah. um, if, if young kids can latch on to our band or any other band and see through all the nonsense that that is out there these days um, and that's pretty cool mm -hmm. and you know we see a pretty wide age range at our shows these days we see a lot of people bringing their kids we see grandparents bringing their kids and uh, that's pretty cool mm -hmm. uh, I'd rather have it that way than just every single fan be you know a, so a, a, a three year age span yeah. uh, and that happens a lot I mean when so a band blows up with a hit you know in the summer of 1992 if you happen to be 18 and then that was it mm -hmm. uh, maybe that's a product of just touring and touring and touring and touring not having the burden of some kind of overnight success story. Mm -hmm. And speaking of touring, I mean, you guys do, you know, a lot of you know, touring as a, as a band. There's, you know, I, I have a few bands that I that I call road dogs, and bands that are always on the road, whether they have something new or not, they're out there because they love to play music and they love to play it live. And I consider you guys one of those bands because I mean, you guys are always out playing a show or doing a small tour or, I mean you guys keep yourself busy and haven't lost the passion for, for what you do what, what do you it's, think what do you think keeps you guys you know wanting to do this and not getting burned out on it um, you have to strike a balance and you can't get burned out on it I mean it, I won't lie the older you get the more difficult it is to leave home because your responsibilities are greater mm -hmm. um, and when you're 19 you can go out for half a year and then crash your parents basement it's fine mm -hmm. um, it's different now no. but I love doing this I and mean, my idea of success is not you know fame and fortune my idea of success is 
I only really wake up and I have to, other than like take out the trash and do the dishes and the same things that everyone else does. Mm-hmm. I only have to do two things. That's either write rock and roll music or perform rock and roll music. And that's a pretty fortunate thing to be able to say and do. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't take that for granted because I know a lot of friends that have bands and all they want to do is just play a damn show and they can't even manage to do that because of whatever reason. Mm-hmm. And here we are, we get to tour the world and play, play music that we write and people other countries sing along and that's a thrill Mm -hmm. sure there are times when it gets old and you you don't feel like doing it but you know the worst day of rock and roll is the best day of being stuck in morning traffic you know Uh, and uh, and I also think you know you got to challenge yourself I'd rather take a risk and fail and you know just kind of regurgitate some stuff uh, the creative life is uh, it's 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 emotional but it's, it, it, it reaps bigger rewards, I think, in the end. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you seem to have, to have the right attitude with, with the whole music scene. And, and I think that's what bands are supposed to do is tour. They're supposed to play live. All that other nonsense is just, you know, that comes after. Mm-hmm. Um, records, that's great, but, you know, people have been playing live for ten, tens of thousands of years. Mm-hmm. And um, that's the immediacy of the show. Uh, is much more important than the static nature of a video or a or a record um, or in stores or all the other kind of nonsense that gets along with it. It's the, it's the show that matters. What got me as a kid growing up was <clears throat> my first concert was Kiss back in 1977. And what got me was their interaction with the audience. They weren't up there like, we're rock stars and you guys are peons. They had an interaction with the audience, and they had a connection with the audience. And you guys kind of have that same thing where, I mean, the Clutch fans are some die-hard Clutch fans. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they're, they're, I mean, they're kind of like a, I hate saying a gang, but, I mean, they stick together. They're, a family is more of a, a big word. Um, does that surprise you at all that the fans are that dedicated to you guys? Uh or loyal? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm glad. Yeah. Uh, I think that also has to do with when you build up a fan base by touring. Mm-hmm. Um, they become fans of a band and not just one or two songs. Um, mm-hmm. And it takes a, a longer time to do that, um, but it lasts a lot longer. Mm-hmm. And with us, I mean, we've never really been too preoccupied with, you know, a lot of smoke and mirrors on stage. And I think certain people appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Some people hate it. You yeah. know, they, they say, well, where's your where's your pyro? This isn't a show. And if that's what they're into, we're not the band for them. Um, maybe it's just we're too lazy. But um, well, I mean, I, from my opinion, your guys' as a music speaks, right? So you don't need the gadgets and gizmos and explosions because it's more powerful just with your vocals and the music of the band. Um, just from my perspective as a fan, and that, that's why I like you guys, because you don't need the big backdrops and all the fancy lights and fog machines and this and that to pull off a damn good show. Well, we try to keep it as simple as possible. And, uh, you know, going back to Motorhead, one of the conversations I had with Lemmy, we were talking about um, stripping things down. Sometimes you can get, like, distracted with adding stuff to music or adding stuff to a show, mm-hmm. and you can that can tend to make you lose focus and become lazy because you start relying on that and not music and mm-hmm. uh, he, you know he just said to me it's it's only rock and roll you're not storming the gates of Fallujah it's it's supposed to be simple mm-hmm. that's why people come here is to forget about life for a while and if you make it complicated then all of a sudden they're not being entertained they're, too, um, you know, they're just being kind of fooled mm-hmm. in life. I, don't, I don't know if that makes any sense but, mm-hmm. uh, people uh, a lot of people can tell sincerity on stage or not some people don't want sincerity some people want a magic show mm-hmm. yeah, to each their own so, yeah. so uh, just a couple more questions and uh, we'll wrap this up um, are you a, a fan of the, the social networks out there Is, do you interact with those is that something that, that you're into at all because I know some people are and some aren't I'm one of those who is, is not, I have nothing to do with it. Um, 
rather just keep yourself, your personal life to yourself than put it out there for everyone. All my friends have my phone number. That's and uh, and uh, I don't know, I. It's when I go home, I mean, this this whole touring thing is very social. There's a lot of people all the time. So when I go home, um, I like to shut up shop. I mean, just have very just be normal, just again. quiet. And, you, know, um, you know, I have an email address. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> I have that. Nice. There's that. Nice. So, uh, what uh, the rest of the year hold for you guys? Um, um, well, we're just. Uh, Got those couple festivals. And we have um, uh, two quick, very, very quick tours, and then um, is yeah, one of those with prom. One of those is with prom. Nice. And that's the one in. Um, I believe it's in August. Is it August? I believe it's in August. Um, it's not too terribly long. Mm -hmm. It's only maybe about two weeks long. And um, I like that pairing between the two. Well, prom. Prong gave us one of our very first tours ever back in '94. Wow! And uh, well, I guess we had done a couple before that, but uh, that was a big tour for us. Mm -hmm. and we became friends with those guys. And actually, even before then, they gave us some one-off gigs when they came through Baltimore. And um, their Prong's near and dear to our hearts because Tim and John Paul were always big fans of Prong, and they introduced me to them. And I remember when we were initially looking for a second guitar player. I went to the University of Maryland Student Union bulletin board where everybody put like their thing, like selling amps or bands. Mm -hmm. And I put a little three by five card band looking for a uh, second guitar player. Must have own, and all it said was must have own gear and you must be in the prom. And that was it. And uh, the guy that showed up um, was a bit of a hack, so he didn't last very long. Nice. <laughs> But, but Prong is a great guy. Yeah, I've known Tommy for years and years. He's a great guy. Yeah. Yeah, I love those guys. Yeah. So when, when I was hearing about that, I was like, man, I wish you guys would come through here, but I don't think I, there was any days coming back. Yeah, I think it's area. primarily east of the Mississippi. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome pairing, though. Definitely. Yeah, it'd be good. Well, cool, man. Well, uh, thanks a lot for taking time to chat with us today. Thanks, I appreciate it, man. Cheers. Uh,